Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Hiking season is just about to start here in Australia, so for this video I thought I'd give you some of my tips on buying new hiking gear, so stick around. I'll link to all of my stuff that I recommend down below. If you're wanting to give day hiking a go and you're starting from scratch, the first thing you'll need to buy is a day pack. These are my day packs. Seasoned travellers will always recommend you buy the pack first before the gear. That way, if you start to go a little crazy buying gear, you will have your pack size in mind and what will actually fit in that pack so you don't go crazy. <laughs> I would not buy my first day pack online. I would go into a store and try a few on, make sure that I've found one that is really comfortable and that I love and then if I wanted to try and find it cheaper online, I could do that then afterwards. This is my bigger day pack of the two that I have. Uh, this is the Osprey Series 36 litre. Um, 36 litres is quite big for a day pack. I can fit a lot of stuff in this. It's, it is kind of handy to have a nice big day pack. Um, although these days I don't really carry that much anymore so that's why I use my camelback most of the time. Um, however this pack I took overseas I managed to fit everything that I needed in this. If I could have got the weight down then I wouldn't have had to check it in um, however I couldn't so I still checked it in but this would have been fine as a carry-on it was just a little too heavy for my Nepal trek. So. So a bigger day pack could possibly be used for a travel bag as well. Some day packs like this one will come with its own uh, rain cover as well. So if that's something that you're concerned about, if you're carrying things on you in your pack that you don't want to get damaged by rain, then you might need to purchase one separately if the pack that you're buying doesn't have one included. The Camelbacks don't include one, um, however, because it's pretty small, I just throw my pack on and then throw my raincoat on over the top, which protects it good enough. Some packs, like, uh, I'm pretty sure most Camelbacks will come with its own hydration bladder inside. Otherwise, you can buy them separately. I've got three litre water bladders in all my packs. Uh, I just feel like three litres is a nice amount for a day hike. I don't drink that much water, so I probably wouldn't even get through half of this on a day hike, but it's always better to have more than enough water than not enough water. I also recommend a bladder over water bottles because Water bottles can be a pain. You have to stop, take your pack off, get out your water bottle, have a drink. I find that if you're using a water bottle, you don't drink enough water. Whereas if you're using a bladder, you've got the hose right here and you can have lots of little drinks more often rather than one big drink, not very often, which is not recommended. Next thing is footwear. I've done a video on why I wear trail runners instead of hiking boots, so I'll link that below. But I've even done a hike in my Tevas, so I'm not really one for telling you what footwear you should wear. Um, it's just a personal preference. Nobody knows your body like yourself, so if you feel like you have strong ankles, like you play sport or something, um, and you like to be able to move around on them, then you probably wouldn't like the restrictions of a hiking boot, that's why I don't wear them. Plus trail runners are a whole heap lighter and they dry a lot quicker as well, but anyway, that's a whole other story. 
So footwear is probably something that you'll have to experiment with yourself and find out what works best for you. Now a good raincoat is a must. Even if the weather looks fine, you should always have one of these in your pack just in case. It can also be used as a windbreaker as well. Some people will also pack another warm layer like a puffy jacket or something and I used to do that as well but nowadays because I'm lightening my load I just pack this and this keeps me warm enough at the top of a mountain or if I've stopped for a while I'll chuck this on. Multi-use item and must have. A headlamp is another must-have because you just don't know what's going to happen on trail. Uh, something could happen that forces you to finish in the dark, so I recommend a headlamp or a torch of some kind other than your phone. If you don't already have a headlamp and you go and buy one, you'll probably use it if you go camping as well and you'll start to wonder how you lived life without one. <laughs> I've got some trekking poles here. I personally like to use them. I like to have them to help me climb up steep hills, but mostly to assist me in descending down steep hills. If you have uh, maybe knee injuries or just some issues with your knees, or even if you just want to uh, help protect your knees, then you might want to think about getting some trekking poles. There are a few different kinds of trekking poles you can get. These are the uh, Z, the Z fold style, or you can get the um, clip style, which has just got like these clips. I would not recommend your twist style um, because your hands will get sweaty, you might be putting them away, getting them back out, putting them away, getting them back out. And I found the twist ones can be a bit annoying when you're all sweaty and you're trying to set them up. Also, the handles can be made out of different things as well. These are foam, hard foam, which I love. Uh, they still stay nice and grippy even when uh, my hands are covered in sweat. I've also heard that the cork handles are really good as well. I haven't tried them yet. I kind of feel like I would still slip on them once I got sweaty um, and just stay away from the plastic handles. I'll link to the video I made on how to use trekking poles. Uh, it's just a bit of a beginner's guide. You might want to check that out as well. So I reckon that's all the gear you would probably need for a day hike. I'll link to the two day hike packing videos I've made. The first one is older and I used to carry a lot more stuff but you might want to check that out as well. But they're your main gear purchases. The rest of the stuff you might have at home. Now that you've got your footwear sorted your trekking poles, your raincoat, headlamp and hydration bladder, you might want to get into overnight hiking. But there are a few more things you'll need to get first. The big three, pack, tent and sleeping bag. Although it could be the big four because these days sleeping mats can be quite expensive as well and you'll definitely want one of them. I'll link below all the gear I have but this is a personal preference just like your footwear. This is my pack, it's the Osprey Aura AG 65 litre. This pack is considered quite heavy these days, but it's comfortable and it still works for me. Although I am considering an ultralight option, I'll link to that one below as well, just so you can compare for yourself. Same goes with this bigger pack, you'll want to go in store and have it fitted properly because as you know you'll be wearing it for a lot longer and it needs to be comfortable. Also while you're in store you can talk to the shop assistant about any possible future hikes you might want to do and that way
they can pick out the right size that would suit you best. This 65 litre is quite big and theoretically should cover me for any possible through hike that I want to do. Most packs are not waterproof. Some consider themselves water resistant but always say don't rely on that and that they're, they're never going to be 100% waterproof. So you might need to purchase a pack rain cover as well. So this is a large size from Osprey. Um, you can get any brand you want really, um, but this large size fits the pack that I have. I've named this section tent, however there are a few options available for you. So you can go a tent um, like I prefer because I'm a bit of a sook and I like to have the, the full mesh bug protection and also a, a rain fly option as well if the weather looks shitty. Otherwise most of the time I'll just sleep with just the mesh so I can lay there and look at the stars. I also like to have room as well, so this is a 2P, a two-person tent. I like to sleep with my pack inside with me. I have tried 1P options and having my pack outside and I didn't really like that. Because of this, I have to carry a little bit of extra weight and a bit more bulk. I've done a review video on this tent, I'll link to that below as well if you want to check it out. The other options you have include a shelter. I've tried one of them as well, I didn't really like it, I had, it was too small and I had condensation issues. You could get a bivy, which is kind of like a tiny little swag, so if you already know you like camping in a swag, a bivy might be an option for you, which would be great because they are super light and packed down really small. Then there's a hammock and also just a tarp. If you wanted to go super light and you're not fussed about sleeping with the bugs and the animals and on the ground and you just wanted that bit of shelter over top of you. Like I said, personal preference, have a play around and work out what you like best. Sleeping bag. This is my sleeping bag. I love it. It's actually one of my first original purchases that I still use and still love. Just about everything else I've swapped out for different things, but this has always stayed with me. Uh, however, I am thinking about swapping it out for a quilt, so that's another option. Sleeping bag or quilt. Quilts will save a little bit of weight and a little bit of uh, packed size in your pack. I'll link to a video by Enlightened Equipment which is the company I'm considering getting my quilt from. Mainly just because each one is custom made and they offer different colours which I think is cool and I'd like to have that choice. Other companies like Z Packs make quilts as well now. But if you're going to go with a quilt then you need an insulated sleeping mat. The Enlightened Equipment video explains how the quilts work um, better than I can, so I'll just link to that below. <laughs> so that's your big three covered. However, another thing that you will need is a sleeping mat or a sleeping pad, whatever you want to call it. There are a few different options here as well. You can get an inflatable sleeping mat, a self-inflating sleeping mat and a closed cell foam pad. I'm a cold sleeper so I pretty much need the warmest, most insulated, highest R value sleeping mat around. <laughs> this one here is a bit of a, a compromise on weight however. Um, this is Cedar Summit's Comfort Light insulated sleeping mat and I've just got it packed up in um, Cedar Summit's Airstream pump sack. So I'm not actually blowing it up, I'm not blowing air into it, I'm just filling the pump sack with air and then pushing it into it. I'm quite a lazy camper however so I'm always looking to simplify my camp setup when I look up there. 
I am considering trying a closed cell foam pad. I know that's not going to be anywhere near as warm as this or as comfortable, but it will be super quick and easy and I won't be worrying about a puncture because that's another thing that you do think about with these inflatable sleeping mats. I don't know if I'm going to sleep warm enough, uh, especially if I end up getting the quilt, uh, that probably won't work with it, but I'll never know until I try, so I'm probably going to buy one and give it a go. I need to have a pillow. When I first started out, I just tried shoving my clothes in, in a stuff sack in a bag and sleeping on that and that was not comfortable enough for me. So I now use a little Cedar Summit pillow and I keep that rolled up with my sleeping mat. I would say a stove is optional. A lot of hikers cold soak their food. This is something that I haven't really thought about or researched because I like to have hot meals and my coffee in the morning. Either way, you will need an eating utensil and one of my favourite things is my Cedar Summit long-handled spork. In my opinion, this is the only thing you'll ever need along with a knife of some kind. I just have a Swiss Army flick knife that I can use for lots of different things. I'll link to my blog post that explains everything about my kitchen setup if you choose to go that way. However, it's not mandatory for an overnight hike. So that's about all the gear you'll need for an overnight hike. I'll link to my packing video below just to give you some ideas on what else to pack. That's about it. So uh, I apologise for the light. It took me a while to get my shit together and make this video. <laughs> if you feel I've forgotten something or you have any questions at all, please comment below and I'll be more than happy to answer them. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And until next time, see ya.